Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 16 of the 2023 Tour de France. It's the individual time trial. 22.4 kilometers in length, about 13 miles in distance. Two categorized climbs on today's stage. Well, two climbs. That's not necessary categorized because it's only the last one is. But the first climb, 1.3 kilometers, about 8.5%. And the second one will start just under 16 kilometers to go, solid 2.5 kilometers long at about 9.5%. So the last categorized climb, which will count for KOM points here on today's stage 16, is going to have some kind of drama because will guys do a bike change or not? Now, if you guys watched my channel yesterday on Beyond the Coverage, I told you no way would I do a bike change unless I look at the course and see that it's technical or really rough or super narrow or just really tight and turny, then maybe. But otherwise, at 9.5%, for only 2.5 kilometers and not even summoning at the top, I'm not doing a bike change. Told you guys that yesterday, and when I watched today's race, flipping on the channel from GCN commentators, I'm sticking with the same opinion. There's no way I would switch bikes after seeing this course when 2.5 kilometers is hard at 9.5%. But the drag coming into the finish, that says TT all over the place to me when I'm sitting on the Chesterfield, especially, especially if I can carry the speed of Wout Van Aert, Jonas Vanigo, and Tade Pogacar. These guys will finish the last two kilometers of today's stage. They're doing 30 kilometers an hour. When you're in the TT position at that kind of speed, it makes a big time difference. But will all the teams do that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. When the racing starts, it's going to be Michael Morkoff, and he's leaving the ramp first here because he's the Lantern Rouge person here at the Tour de France. So he's going to be first off the ramp, and the pseudo quick step rider is going to be first across the line to put himself in the hot seat. Now behind, we're going to start seeing a little bit of action just a few hundred meters into it because John Dagenkohl, DSM, goes into the right turn, loses his back tire, and then he crashes. He's going to have some company. There's going to be a couple more riders going down, and one of them is his teammate, Niels Ekhoff. Ekhoff's a big guy. You see him going in there. The back tire starts to lose it. As both riders from DSM were on the white paint, and the back tire just started to come out, you see it more on Niels Ekhoff than the other two riders that went down. But Niels Ekhoff goes down as he loses the back end, and all the riders that crashed, three of them total on this first corner, only a few hundred meters into the start, coming right off the ramp here on today's Stage 16, just sit up and look back at their bike up there going like, what happened? Well, you were on the paint. It's a TT bike. A little more weight's put on the front wheel, which means a little more weight's put off the back wheel, which means the back wheel loses it when it's not on paint. So they both, all three guys spun out and end up crashing early. Now behind, what's happening? Remy Cavagna is putting on a display of force. He's flying along the course. He is the French national time trial champion in years past, and he rides for pseudo quick step. His teammate up front, Dre's Devenin, dislodged the other pseudo quick step rider, Michael Morkoff. And so Dre's Devenin's in the hot seat when Remy Cavagna is going full gas. Remy Cavagna is putting on a show out there, and he is solid on the pedals. He'll cross the line, put himself into the hot seat with the best time here early in today's stage 16 for pseudo quick step that really highlighted most of the show. Now, back to film up just a little bit. It's the You Know X writer, Soren Vornskull there, that's doing a bike change. I'm like, what are you doing a bike change for? Are you guys kidding me? You see he's taking the time to take his computer off, his bike's getting brought up to him, and then he's jumping on his road bike, and, they, and he's got that ridiculous TT helmet on. If anyone ever tells you when they're talking about to a professional rider saying, I just use this equipment, trust me, it's the fastest, we've tested it, it's the bomb, it's the fastest. When you look at this time trial helmet, on the U you know X rider. Have any of these guys gone faster with putting that helmet on throughout this 2023 season? I don't think so. So maybe they should change that helmet to something else because certainly that massive Darth Vader style helmet there combing the desert from Spaceballs is ridiculous. But Soren Vorenskull is going to ride it anyways to the finish and lose a ton of time at the end of today's stage. So like I said, that helmet isn't making any speeds here for you know X. Now, we go down. Let's start taking a look at the KOM favorites. We got Nielsen Palace from EF Education. He's leaving the ramp on his road bike. Now, I don't know if I'd leave the ramp on my road bike, even if I'm going for KOM. But remember on the, today's individual time trial, the KOM time is going to start from the bottom and go to the top of the climb. What you did before the stage 
and what you do after the top of the KOM time-wise doesn't matter. It's only between the bottom and the top of that KOM that's gonna count. So Nielsen Palace is gonna roll off the ramp on his regular, normal road bike. Only problem is, for me, he's got his, the TT disc on the back of the bike. I don't understand this philosophy. Sometimes the discs are fairly light, and I remember at times riding for Radio Shack that we had an exceptionally light one, but if his disc is any heavier than a normal road wheel that you can run super light for today's KOM stage, you could just get rid of that disc and ride your bike. Now we'll see Nielsen Palace hit the KOM. He's gonna go full gas, but gain no KOM points at the end of today's stage. So nothing they achieve tactically wise with leaving the ramp on your road bike will help Nielsen Palace get any points at the end of today's stage. We look back though, and it's Liddell Trek Ciccone. We saw Ciccone last yesterday's stage that he was going full gas trying to get KOM points, but just wasn't able to make it happen with the exception of just a few, but that did get him in the race leader's KOM jersey. So now we see him decked out in the, in the ASO jersey there of polka dots all over the place from head to toe, basically. Jaconi's going full gas on his TT bike when you look back at the ramp and he took off, but he'll change at about nine kilometers to go. This is the way I would have done it. Ludell Trek did intelligent tactic here by leaving with the time trial bike because there is a time cut on today's stage 16, so you want to be fast through the first part, then change at nine kilometers instead of 5.6 kilometers where we see other riders changing from. He changes at nine. That gives his legs a little bit of time to adapt to the road position. And then you can go into the, the KOM full gas on your road bike and be already adjusted to that position. He'll go full gas into it and he'll ride a solid KOM here to gain some points at the end of today's stage. Not solid on the general classification or on today's individual stage, but he does gain time on the KOM and will keep today's KOM jersey when it's all said and done after today's stage 16. Well done, Ciccone, intelligent riding for Liddell Trek. Now we start looking at some of the favorites leaving the ramp because Wout Van Art for Yumbo Visma has departed. He is flying, he's in the TT position, power all over the place. We start seeing his time checks. It's running close there with Remy Cavagna. Then when he gets into the mountain part of today's stage 16, Wout Van Art goes to work. He'll power all the way up to the finish line of today's stage 16, and he will dislodge Remy Cavagna by 15 seconds there from the Frenchman from Pseudo Quicks to put Yumbo Visma in the hot seat. Now, Wout Van Art, while he was out on the course, and just as he finished, all the other GC favorites in the top 10 were leaving. Seth Kuss had left the ramp. Adam Yates leaving the ramp. Then we're starting to get down to the top of the GC favorites. As Wout Van Art had finished and crossed the line, we started seeing that leaving the ramp was Carlos Rodriguez from Enos. He's sitting third on the general classification, and Enos want this podium spot. They've already got a couple stage victories here in the 2023 Tour de France, but they need Carlos Rodriguez, the Spaniard, to deliver on today's individual time trial if, if they want to keep him in a podium spot here at the Tour de France. Behind him is Tade Pogacar, the number one ranked rider in the world up here on the butterfly effect. The Slovenians leaving the, leaving the ramp and flying right away out of the saddle. Then you see him drop into the TT position. He'll fly through that first corner that caused three riders already the crash that I talked about earlier. Tade Pogacar goes through it, but look, he's not touching the paint at all. Cleanly makes it through the right, then starts accelerating. We see him get into the first climbing here er, just after two kilometers early in this stage, and he's already already up on Wout Van Aert. The Slovenian is flying, but guess what? Let's go back to the start ramp. Jonas Finnego decked out in the gorgeous race leader's yellow jersey. If I back the film up just a little bit before, he was warming up right there by the start area of today's stage 16, so you know his legs are already warm when he's sitting up on the ramp. We see the clock tick down from 10, then it hits 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and the yellow jersey is off. The last rider to leave the ramp on today's stage 16. Right away, he's out of the saddle, sprinting, coming off the ramp. You see him sit down, start sprinting again. He'll drop into his TT position, then fly through that right corner. When he goes through the right corner, same scenario like Ty Bagacar, not touching the white paint until he just has to cross the little strip, makes it through the right corner, and then Jonas Vinigo looks like he's flying, and we're just three, 400 meters in today's stage 16. Now, I told you, Ty Pagacar, 
Gotch are up the road. He's already flying on Wout Van Aert's time. But when we start seeing the time gap to Wout Van Aert, right after that, we see the time gap. Jonas Vinigo is putting on someone. It's about 21 seconds. It says Wout Van Aert, but I don't know if they mean Tade Bogacar because it's showing green. Well, Jonas Vinigo's flying. That's all I can tell. And anyone could tell the speed differences that he's doing to Tade Bogacar. They look magnificent every time the cameras go back from Tade Bogacar to Jonas Vinigo. When they hit the first time check for Jonas Vinigo, he's up 16 seconds on Tade Pagacar's time. Guys, he's going to hold the race leader's jersey if, if he can keep it together here on stage 16. I'm sitting on the Chesterfield thinking, man, maybe the race leader's jersey just went out exceptionally hot and he might blow up after doing that first category climb, after doing that first climb here on stage 16 and then dropping down through the flat sections and through the descent, he was flying. I mean, taking risk all over the place, but never looked like he was too far over the edge to me while sitting on the couch. Now we're coming up to the second time point. Tadej Pogacar is flying. He's still making time on Wout Van Aert, but losing time to Jonas Vinigo still. We're gonna come into the second time check. We'll see that Tadej Pogacar is down 31 seconds to Jonas Vinigo. Now, if I back the film all the way up close to the beginning of today's stage 16, it's Mikhail Björk. Mikhail Björk rides for UAE Team Emirates, and I want to show you with 5.6 kilometers to go, Mikhail Björk did a bike change right when the climb started getting difficult. You would see the switch, and now I'm sitting on the Chesterfield again, one and Tadej Pogacar. You don't have the time to change bikes. Please, please, Tadej Pogacar. Do not change bikes. We see him start the last climb here on stage 16. Goes underneath the banner there, full gas. And then directly after that, a few hundred meters, the Slovenian is pulling over to the side of the road, waving that he wants the bike change. Look at the husband and wife. I assume they are running with the flag going up there. The Tade Pogaccio, I'm like, oh man, don't knock the kid off his bike or something. This is a nightmare scenario to be doing a bike change here on a stage like this. Individual time trial is on stage 16. But Tade Pogaccio, UA. ET members have had it in the plan all along for him to do a bike change. Now we'll see Tadej Pogacar. He'll throw his bike over to the husband and wife spectator that dropped their flag on the side. Now they're holding Tadej Pogacar's bike as the mechanic's running over doing a road bike switch from his TT. Tadej Pogacar, get on the bike. Look at the fans. They're both carrying the bike back to the mechanic there as they drop it off to the UAE team members mechanic to put it back on the roof. And Tadej Pogacar's flying up the road. There's no way, again, that I can think that I would absolutely want to do a bike change here ever. No way. I don't care if it's Usain Bolt himself that's pushing me for 100, 150 meters to get going. This is a ridiculous move especially because you're losing time to Jonas Vinigo, who started at 31 second advantage when this climb started proper. Now Jonas Vinigo still on his TT bike. He's flying. He goes past the normal spot where we've seen riders changing bikes and Jonas Vinigo is going to stay on his bike. While Van Aert stayed on his bike and he's in the hot seat right now. Remy Cavagna stayed on his TT bike and he's in the hot seat. Everybody that's been in the hot seat has been on their TT bike. But Tade Pagacar switched to the road bike. Every time the cameras go back, when they go over the top of the climb here, you see that Jonas Vinigo is still up on Tade Pagacar. He's about a minute and five seconds up on Tade Pogacar. Now we're coming into 1.5 kilometers to go. There's a little bit of roundabout coming up. Look at the position of Tade Pogacar. He's in the road position, sitting up like this. I guarantee you guys they're doing 25, 32 kilometers an hour right here. The wind drag has to be huge. Look back at that same point in time with Jonas Vinigo, who's gaining. He's only like 300 meters behind Tade Pogacar right now, and he's in the TT bars flying. The kid is smoking right now. Now I told you he was fourth ranked on the butterfly effect, but I moved him up to third over Remco Evnepoel at the first time check. The second time checked, I moved up the yellow jersey into second place and bumped down Primoz Roglic on the butterfly effect here for top five best riders in the world. Now can he bump off Tade Pogacar, the Slovenian. Now we look up front, the Slovenian, 450 meters to go. He's catching Carlos Rodriguez. Guys, Carlos Rodriguez is not having a bad time. He'll go 12th on today's stage. We see Tade Pogacar gaining on Carlos Rodriguez. Carlos Rodriguez will throw his bike at the line. He'll cross for 12th on today's stage when it's all said and done. 
Tade Pagacha right behind the Ineos rider with the bike throw will, will get himself into the hot seat here and take over from Wout Van Aert. One minute and 13 seconds faster than Wout Van Aert. But guess what? Let's go back down and you only have to go 200 meters after Tade Pagacha across the line at the 200 meters to go with two minutes still left on today's stage to be able to win. It's Jonas Vinigo in the race leader's yellow jersey. He's throwing everything into it. It's getting ugly looking on the face, but he's got flying on the pedals. He throws the bike across the line. He crosses 1 minute 38 seconds up on Tade Pagacha to win today's stage 16 and keep the race leader's yellow jersey. He goes into the race lead here at the Tour de France after stage 16, one minute and 48 seconds up on Tade Pagacha. Now guys, everyone can say all kinds of stories. They can go Tade Pagacha, waste a lot of energy throughout week one and week two going for all those time bonuses and sprints. But when you dissect today's stage, Tade Pagachar was money on today's stage. He beat Wout Van Aert by 1 minute and 13 seconds and did a bike change. Now the bike change tactic, that was absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what they're thinking. Sitting on the Chesterfield, by the time they wave the car to get to start slowing over to move the bike to change the bike and stop, I'm counting 15 seconds till he gets going again. Then when you add in all the time that you're losing as the speed is trying to get going up to speed again, because like I said, you don't have Usain Bolts back there pushing you to get up to speed. You got some other mechanic that has no speed whatsoever pushing Tade Pagacha. I'm sure you're losing 30 seconds between that and every time on this climb, the only part where Tade Pagacha could be gaining anything at all is maybe a few hundred meters after he gets going, which means you got 2K, maybe a K and a half to really get any kind of time back and you've already given up 30 seconds to Jonas Vinigo. It's not, it's not intelligent at all on a stage like today. Go back to the Jura where Primoz Roglic won and did a bike change. Made total sense. Here on stage 16, absolutely ridiculous and knuckleheadism at its best. Even if we go all the way back to FDJ early in the stage, Stefan Kuhn, who was trying to win today's stage 16, he was up the whole time on Remy Cavagna's time. Then he did a knucklehead bike exchange too and lost massive time going up today's finish to not even get close into the race leader's hot seat here on stage 16. But Tade Pagacha, this was a knucklehead move for sure to change bikes. There's no way you can make up at least the minimum. The minimum that he's going to lose right away is 15 seconds before he even starts touching the pedals again. And that's hoping that everything flows right with the legs, that the transition was good, and that those fans on the side of the road don't knock something off and cause them more time. Okay, they didn't, but I'm sure when you start looking at the top and you look at the speed of Jonas Vinigo in the TT position while Tade Pogaccio sitting up straight taking a ton of win, I'm sure at that point in time, Jonas Vingo, you're the number one ranked rider on the butterfly effect. You just bump three guys down and less than 22 kilometers of racing here on stage 16 to put yourself into what looks like the most dominating chance here to win this year's 2023 Tour de France because we know Jonas, Jonas Vingo and his Jumbo Visma squad are the best team in this race, even though Tade Pogacar afterwards said, well, my legs didn't feel quite great, and I guarantee you that this race is not quite over. He's hoping for some rain and some chaos. Now, he had kept talking about going over Col de Mary Blanc, and he hopes that something like that happens. So what he's trying to tell us, I believe, is that he's hoping Jonas Vigo has some kind of bad day, either on tomorrow's stage 16, or, of course, on the next mountain stage, on stage 20 of this year's Tour de France. I told you guys yesterday on Beyond the Coverage, that Tade Pogacar, if he was close on the general classification, he'd have to keep everything together and go for a kind of a, like a small field group of GC sprint at the finish of these mountain stages. But now Tade Pogacar is going to have to go big. He's going to have to drop Jonas Vinigo, the number one ranked rider on the butterfly effect, hard on tomorrow 17 if if Tade Pogacar wants to move back into the first place here at the Tour de France and back into first on the butterfly effect. All I can say right now is the butterfly effect, top five list, the top four guys, Jonas Vinigo, Tade Pogacar, Primoz Roglic, and Remco Evenepoel in that exact order. They can change at any point in time coming through these next few days. If Jonas Vinigo has a bad day, maybe Tade Pogacar jumps back up. 
But after this individual time trial, with what I can only say was absolutely a spectacular, incredible ride from Jonas Vanigo, you're first on the butterfly effect for sure. And I don't see how you can lose this year's Tour de France unless, of course, Jumbo Visma do some crazy tactics. Otherwise, if Jumbo Visma stick to the easiest tactic in the world, number one rule on the butterfly effect, stay with your team leader at all times. They will win this year's Tour de France. I just can't see how Tadej Pogacar can make up one minute and 48 seconds on Jonas Vingo unless Jonas Vingo blew everything that he had in his legs to make such a remarkable stage 16 victory here at the Tour de France. Either way, it was a marvelous day sitting on the Chesterfield. And we got two more big mountain stages here at the 23 Tour de France. So like and subscribe. I'll see you guys real soon. Jonas Vingo, number one ranked rider on the butterfly effect. Congratulations. That was spectacular. Like and like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon. There you go. That was your best TT ever. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Jonas. <laughs>